Microsoft shoves OneDrive down your throat. Like, I don't want to use OneDrive, Microsoft. I really don't want to use OneDrive. We're going to go into some detail about what exactly that snitch of an operating system is saying behind your back. So if you're interested in learning more about the impact of Windows and Microsoft products on your privacy, you've come to the right place. So with all of that being said, let's dig right in. So here's the top ways that Windows invades your privacy. Number one is telemetry and diagnostics. You see, Windows, I know that sounds really vague, so we're going to go into some detail about what that actually means. You see, Windows collects a bunch of data about how you use the computer and sends it to Microsoft. Uh, this takes the form of some, here's some specific examples. It takes the form of recording every time you open an application and when you close it. Every time you open an app on Windows, Microsoft gets notified about it and it's added to their dossier on your activity. Uh, another way that they track everything you do is by keeping track of your search queries. Have you ever wondered why Bing Search is integrated into the Windows search bar? It's so that it forces everything you type to get sent to Bing, so Microsoft has a record of everything you ever searched for on your computer. Uh, there's also this fun stuff called optional diagnostics, and this is even more invasive. It includes things like what you type and when you type, and where you type it. it includes things like your browser history. Uh, so that actually brings me to point number three. Microsoft takes all of this data, and they tie it to an advertising ID. This advertising ID is basically you, it's a way for Microsoft to track you, and associate all of your data with an identity. This allows them to serve more personalized advertisements, but more important than that, it allows them a wholesale collection of everybody's sensitive information about how they use their computer. Another way that Windows spies on you is via your location services. Uh, Microsoft will periodically take your location and send it to their server to keep track of where you physically are. This is provided under the guise of theft protection, however it serves a dual purpose. It prevents, it does help, help you get your machine back when it gets stolen, but in addition to that it also tracks your every physical movement. Another way that Microsoft invades your privacy is via the cloud sync and Windows backup mechanisms. You see, what, what Microsoft has done is created a cloud service where all of your settings that you picked out in the settings app get synced between your computers. Seems pretty handy, right? Well, except now they get to track what everybody's settings are and collect all that much more information about you. And like I said earlier, Windows is tracking when you open an application and what application it is, so this should be pretty alarming all put together. Another nasty way that Microsoft collects all of your information is with Edge. You don't even have to use Edge for this to be a problem. Like, it's ridiculous because even if you don't use Edge, Microsoft's default behavior is to copy everything from Chrome and Firefox and Opera and all those other browsers. Their strategy is to copy everything from those browsers on your computer into Edge so that they can see all of your browsing activity across all of your browsers. Uh, this is in addition to the network tracking that Microsoft performs. Basically, all the information about your network connections also gets sent to Microsoft in the form of telemetry. They do all of this in the guise of security. But I would go as far as to say that if Microsoft really cared about security, they would focus on tightening up their leaking ship. Because trust me, Windows 11 is a security nightmare. And if they're saying they have to collect all this information for the security of its end users, I'm not buying it, because they've made no meaningful improvements to security in the last few years. So this one's kind of vague, but I'll go into detail on it. So essentially, when you're setting up your computer, Microsoft presents you with options that you can toggle, and 99% of people are going to leave those options at the default setting. Well, Microsoft knows this, so they put all of the settings in the setup process in their favor. For example, collecting optional diagnostic data, tracking your application launches, your location. This is all enabled by default. And the problem is, your average person is not going to change the defaults. 
And even if you do want to make modifications to these settings, Microsoft makes it absurdly complicated on purpose to put settings into a position that favors you rather than them. The point of all of this is that Microsoft is not your friend, Microsoft is not your buddy, and they are tracking every single thing you do on your Windows computer. Now, you may be thinking, okay, now that I know about this stuff, I can go toggle the settings and therefore make my machine more private. And that is, that's somewhat effective, because it will present some of the most egregious tracking that Microsoft performs. However, there's, there's certain things that you can't turn off. You're still required to send required diagnostic data. You don't get to turn that off. Now, here's the fun part. Let's say you go into the settings app and you toggle all those privacy settings. Great. Well, now what's going to happen is a major Windows update will come out and it'll reset all those settings back to the way Microsoft had it. Either that or Microsoft is going to nag you with pop-up notifications. Notifications that you can only ignore for a week before they pop up again. Uh, there's, there's no way to say no to them. You can either say yes or get reminded in a week. Like, I don't want to use OneDrive, Microsoft. I really don't want to use OneDrive. And that brings me to another point. OneDrive. Microsoft shoves OneDrive down your throat. And it's because when you use OneDrive, you have a copy of every file in your home directory on Microsoft's server. Now, this does serve some utility to you, the end user in that you can move between computers and your files are all there. Some people think of this as a backup. It is not a backup. It's a mirror. This is like having two hard drives with the same thing at all times on both of them. If one of them gets deleted, then the other one gets deleted because it's a mirror, not a backup. Sorry, tangents aside, uh, Microsoft wants you to upload all your files to OneDrive. And funny enough, files that you store in OneDrive are not end-to-end -end encrypted. This means Microsoft does reserve the right to go through your files if they suspect that you're up to something that they don't agree with. So yeah, it's pretty clear that Microsoft is being as invasive as they possibly can without breaking the law. Really disgusting behavior from a company that ushered in the home computer market. Now you might be wondering, okay, so I can't just change the settings because Microsoft will change them back, but I can't put up with this level of invasion. In that circumstance, you may want to actually set up a Windows server at home, and through that Windows server you can set up group policy. With group policy, you can permanently disable a lot of this stuff in such a way that Microsoft can't go in behind you and set it back up. Now, this is obviously not a great solution for most people, because I think the, the f there's like a fraction of the population that has a home server, uh, so really not practical for most people. So that brings me to my, my next mitigations that you can take. Uh, you can, for example, switch to macOS. Uh, macOS, I don't really like the user experience of macOS, but it's a hell of a lot better than Windows. And if macOS isn't your thing, then you do have Linux, and Linux is getting better every day. I've been running Linux on my ThinkPad for the last couple weeks, and uh, I've, I've used Linux on and off since 2012, and it's really amazing how much it has grown into this beautiful, mature product. You see, the biggest difference between Windows and Linux is who is the customer. In the Windows world, you are not the customer. The customer is the advertisers that Microsoft sells all your data to. In the Linux world, you are the customer and the price is free. Uh, it doesn't get much sweeter than that. But the reason I say that's the main difference is because Linux is built on its defaults to benefit you. Microsoft Windows on its defaults is built to benefit Microsoft at the detriment to you. So yeah, Windows is just a horrible privacy nightmare. It's basically spyware at this point. Uh, if you're using Windows, consider installing something like Portmaster. It's a firewall application. Uh, that can block a lot of the connections from Windows components to the cloud that you might not necessarily want. And that will actually persist after major updates. 
I'm not sponsored by them, I just think the product is decent, and so I used it as an example. Now, macOS is no saint either. On macOS, what you'll want to do is install something called Little Snitch, which is not free. But you'll want to install this application, Little Snitch, that tells you every network connection your computer tries to make, and you can manually approve or deny them. Yeah, it's a little bit of work up front, filtering everything out, but afterwards you have a machine that is so much more private. Anyway, that was my little video for you. If you enjoyed the video and want to see more, consider subscribing. If you want to get notified when I post a video, there's a little bell icon. Uh, if you liked the video, well, I don't think there's much you can do, actually. I heard some reports that there was a button that was shaped like this, and if you press that button, it would like the video. Uh, but I've gotten conflicting evidence. I'm not sure what that button actually does yet. And I don't think anybody knows for sure. So if you're one of the brave souls who are willing to experiment, consider hitting this button down below and uh, let me know what it does. Now, if you made it this far in the video, leave a little clown emoji in the comments down below. Um, I'll forget that I said this and then I'll see all the clown emojis and I'll think that I did something really stupid. So that would be funny, playing a little prank on future me. Anyway, thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.